Hello, everyone. This is Matt Orozco from Macabre Daily here. I am so excited to have the chance to interview a collection of folks that are involved with a brand new horror film that is about to be released on March 9th, um, 2023. It's The Sound of Silence, and I'm joined by uh, the T3 filmmaking troupe, I'll just call them for now, uh, of Alessandro uh, Antonacci, or actually, let me do this in order, Stefano Mandala uh, from left to right, and then we have Alessandro Antonacci and Daniel Lascar, and then also joining That's us is the star of one, of, one of the stars, rather, of Sound of Silence, who plays Emma. That's Penelope San Giorgi. Nice to have you all with us today. Thank you so much. Same. Thank you for your time. Really happy. Oh, uh, well, more than happy to be here and 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 speak with you all. And uh, as I was telling Penelope before um, the, the interview got started, I just got a chance to watch Sound of Silence last night. Very much looking forward to writing my review. Um, and first and foremost, congratulations uh, on the release, uh, on the upcoming release of the film. Um, Thank you. One mm -hmm. of the things I was really interested about, because this is actually um, coincidentally the second time I've seen this in the past two weeks, which is having more than one director at the helm. Um, so I wanted to get a little bit of background here. Is how did you all come together to craft the story for The Sound of Silence? And were there any direct inspirations that either of you brought kind of collectively or individually to the work? Okay. We... Um... We've, we've been working together for almost seven years now, mm -hmm. and uh, we made um, uh, the first movie that we made was a, an Italian horror feature, very low budget Italian horror feature that we made in 2018. Yes. And then after that movie was selected at Scream Fest uh, 2018, we, um, we created the, the trio, the T3 uh, project, the T3 uh, team and we started you know working as t3 and building the vision and this project and we started shooting uh some shorts some horror shorts all together um and then we decided that we wanted to make the first um uh, horror feature uh, by t3 and and that was uh, so sound of silence is the first uh, english language movie that we make and it's the first official movie by t3 and we we are aware that we are kind of unique. Like we know that there's others, like there's other trios, there's other situ situations like ours, but we also know that we, we're kind of unique. And, and like usually people ask us, you know, how do we survive? How do we pull it <laughs> off? How do we make it happen? And my, um, you know, our, our answer, you, it's, you know, the key is that, you know what matters to what matters to us is not our egos it's not about us but it's about the movie and the project the project that we want to put together that we want to make so every choice every this decision that that we make it's always for the best of the movie of course and never because we want one of us like it more than others and more than the others and um and you know we it's it's good and it it works really it works really well because we managed to bring together um, three different brains and make them work as one. So we, you know, we we bring we bring three different life experiences and three different uh, points of view. So we 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 can like become a bigger like brain. <laughs> the three movies. brains are better than one, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and then you know, like Sound of Silence is a is a low budget movie is a very low budget movie and um we are used to working with low budgets for now at least for now and you know so we handle most of the things ourselves ourselves so being like the fact that it's three of us it's definitely it's definitely helpful and it, it, and it and that allows us to make um more you know and make it better so that's definitely helpful and and like i was saying we we made some shorts and sound of silence was at first, we made before making the feature, we made the short for Sound of Silence in 2020. And when we made it, and it also got selected at Scream Fest 2020. So we knew, like when we saw it, we we kind of realized that we had something special in our hands, something particularly effective. So we decided that we wanted to turn that into a feature. And we know that usually when you turn a short into a feature it's not always easy and the challenge was how do we keep it how do we keep it you know uh attention is, is, how, how do we keep it effective you know and scary as the shorts plus as a low budget but there was also a choice that we made we had several projects that we could have 
uh, produced and shot, but we decided to make Sound of Silence because Sound of Silence had a very strong hook and like concept in our minds. Plus it was easier to uh, execute. So we thought that the low budget version of Sound of Silence was a, a, an effective enough uh, movie for us as a, as a first movie. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if I, I think that was great. And, and I, yeah. And I, and I think it's interesting because I've heard examples where, you know, um, directing kind of troops will kind of split responsibilities. So some will like, yeah. one will say like, I'm more of an actor's director, so I'll work with the actors. And then someone else is more on the technical side. Did you all kind of work together that way where you divvy up where you kind of play most effectively? No, that's, that's, that's us too. Like, that's that's another reason why we work so well it's like each of us uh does uh, his own job does his own thing so like i i do uh the camera work cinematography the editing and all of those technical things and if you are director say, you do, and yeah. i am on the visual and uh, and special effects set and design set design yes writing writing and yes. uh, a cover too Cooking. any cook yeah, yeah. Cooks. <laughs> wow uh, that's a bonus that's very helpful <laughs> in the very well. Penelope will no, probably yeah, say, sure. probably confirm this. So, yes. Yeah. I, I work with actors and uh, so I really enjoy do these things. The, the interesting things is that the first moment we work all together, we bring the ideas, we yeah. write together in, I don't know, three, four times for the script. Uh, yeah. The first one is uh, Alessandro and yeah. Stefano and me. Yeah. So at the end of the day, the script is every day stronger yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah we found we found a way to every time we do something together we find a way to make the machine even improve. better yeah. so like now the, for now now we are writing a new movie and the new process that we um you know are having writing to write the script and everything it got even better than than the first than, than the first time with Sound of Silence because we're testing a new process and like he was saying like he writes the, the first version then I uh, write the second version and he joins us so it's like when we write and produce and create it's the three of us all together mm -hmm. but even there we are yes. we are starting to how do you say split um, uh... so that we keep it the most effective mm -hmm. possible and. But yeah, it's the three of us all together. Yes, when we create. <laughs> I love that because it's almost as if you start with one idea and then it kind of processes through one of your kind of uh, your one of your brains and then it goes to the next one. You process it through yours. So you kind of all have your mark on it. Um, and, and I think that's really, really fascinating and um, certainly speaks to the level of collaboration and iteration you all are bringing to the to the craft. And Penelope, I, I wanted to chat with you a little bit about kind of your work on, in, on the film particularly kind of what most interested you about Emma's character. Um, you know, she is really kind of the star of the show, I would say, and given that she's got most of the screen time. So I'm wondering, you know, when you were looking at the script, what was it that really excited you about playing the role of Emma? Um, hi, Matt. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I had a bit of a slow start because of my connection. Um, totally <laughs> I, what really sold Emma to me was the ending because the first time I talked to uh, the T3 about the project they um, they were really great at selling it as um, it, what it is eventually it's a movie about three women coming together to sort of claim their voice back and um, so that's the underlining metaphor, whether it, it's for the uh, the ghosts that have died uh, in, in the 40s. Is it the 40s? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> whether it's Emma trying to find her voice uh, for a singing audition. Um, the two, uh, the, the, the plot of the movie helps her and the ghosts sort of fulfill uh their destiny in a way um and that was really exciting for me yeah I, I definitely in fact it's interesting you bring that metaphor up because i don't know if i connected those dots but they make complete sense now that you say them out loud <laughs> so it's real. and one of the things i love about film and the chance to talk about it is just that is that one you know you can look at the same piece of work and see it from two different angles either because of the context you had or maybe experience you bring to it and on the note of experience, I was wondering, you know, Emma being kind of this 
singer who's trying to find her voice, but also kind of break out of her own anxiety. Um, given your role as an actor, you know, how much of that were you able to bring from real life experience into the role? Ooh. <laughs> so <laughs> the first scene we ever shot was the audition scene. And that was my first day on a professional set. This was my first professional job. And so the, the anxiety you see on the screen, it's almost completely real, wow. especially because it was very funny. Um, we were all very excited to start. And, and so they said, okay, you sit over there. And then they were looking at the camera, they were sorting things out. And Danielle looks, to, looks up to me and goes, okay, action. <laughs> I was like, what, what do you mean action? <laughs> what do we do? What? what? <laughs> um, so yeah, sure. it, it was a lot of that. Um, and then because it was my first experience on set, it was very much finding my own confidence as a performer uh, throughout the process as well. And they tried to keep it as linear as possible with, um, with the way that we shot uh, um, scene by scene, which was really helpful. But even then it, it was definitely uh, a, a very, um, uh, what's the word? I learned a lot through the experience. Oh, there you go. It's, it's, it sounds like it's got almost like a bit of catharsis part of it to it, where you're, you know, you're, you're, you're shaking off the cobwebs of a first experience, but that's also what's happening to the character. And for what it's worth, right? Um, I don't think I couldn't tell that this was, um, you know, your your first time on a set and with and the way you played the role. So you carried a level of confidence that may not be uh, that that is very visible on screen, uh, regardless of how it felt in the moment. So uh, I think a lot of a lot of credit goes to to the confidence you brought to it, even if behind the scenes you were um, yes. a bit a bit anxious, so to speak. <laughs> And um, back to the T3 folks, you know, thinking about the production process, I know you all mentioned kind of how you delegate that work together. Um, how do you, like, how do you manage any sort of conflict as far as vision goes? You know, when you're thinking about, oh, I think it looks really good this way, or even the iteration that happens on set, how do you all collaborate with those in the moment pivots that happen considering there's three of you to consider rather than just one? Okay. <laughs> I think that I have to like honestly, it's very rare uh, that that happens. Probably because, like we said before, you know, like we were saying before, each of us brings something different in ter even in terms of the uh, the role, you know. So, and and we trust each other. So if I say that this shot, you know, looks good with this light or with this you know, uh, lens or no. they trust me. Or if he says that the actress is supposed to do that, I then tend to trust him and we like do this. And of course this was not, we we had to, you know, earn this. It wasn't like, of course at the beginning it wasn't yes. there. We had to see that what we, the three of us did was working. And so now we trust each other, but yes. It can happen that we are, you know, in a scene and we have maybe different ideas right there in the moment. And if that happens, the best way of dealing with that is you um, just do it all. You know, it's like if you have a couple of options, then Penelope, she's going to do both of those things. <laughs> and then in the editing, yes. we're going to <laughs> figure it out. Yes. So it's. I, I mean, I know that it's not always doable, but mm -hmm. um, usually that's the best way. Because the last thing that you wanna that you that you want is that you end up, you know, you you go and edit the movie and you don't have choice. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that yes. that's that's the that's the that, that's the worst. That, that that's the worst. So having a choice is always better. So I I'm even happy when we have a couple of choices to yes. you know uh, explore. And but we we got very good the more we shoot and the more we create together uh the process gets better like i was saying and before faster. and now we got yeah very good at like dealing with the set and just deciding things in the moment and sometimes of course it's a low budget we have to deal with last yeah. minute changes you know maybe the location doesn't work maybe and so we got very good at making some smart and, and very effective choices even last minute and 
that happens sometimes and we always agree um and like i said if that doesn't happen we do it all so yes. <laughs> It's not a bad compromise, to be quite honest, is if you have the ability to kind of film multiple perspectives, then why not? Because as you said, when you're editing, you know, you might, you don't want to think to yourself, I wish we would have, um, because yeah. that can certainly yeah. bog you down and, and make you wonder the what ifs and those can always, you know, regrets are the things we hope we have the few, uh, the least of when we, uh, when our time on this earth is past. So try and minimize those in the moment as much as possible. And uh and I think uh, I think back, you know, back to Pinelli, you know, when you think about some of the most challenging, rewarding aspects of the filming process, what would you kind of put under those buckets, you know, of being one of the most rewarding, but also one, you know, something that was extremely challenging um, for you on the set and to, during production? Sorry, was that for me? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'll have the same um, one for the T3 folks shortly. So just a uh, spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> oh, that's a really good question. Um, I think for me, the biggest challenge was to, um, cause, cause it's a sort of, uh, the movie, it's about a chase, um, b between me and the ghosts and we're chasing each other. We're sort of unraveling the story. Um, and sometimes we would have to shoot in the same location, but two different moments of this chase. Uh, it's the beginning of the chase, it's the end of the chase. And I, um, I, I wish I had prepared myself to get to the emotional state that I needed uh, to be in, in that specific moment uh, or in that different scene. Um, so it's all that homework that actors do before they get on set so that they know, know exactly okay yeah I'm here now it's a different moment this is what I need boom um <laughs> but I have to say Daniel if if I was not there yet he would come in and he was like okay let's go with me like like we're, we're yeah. here we're emotionally here let's <laughs> let's go <laughs> so he's going, yeah yeah I'm with you I'm with you okay um so that was equally um like something that I'll forever take with me as well as the most challenging part, if that answers the question. Yeah, it does. I mean, trying to get yourself into an emotional state that's authentic mm -hmm. is a really difficult thing to, to control. Um, so being able to having to go from one extreme to another, again, beginning and an end of a scene, um, I can absolutely see that being both equal parts challenging and rewarding. So, so thank you for that. And then to the T3 folks, you know, similar question. As you think about the production and the filming and everything that went into it, what were some of the most challenging things you experienced? And then on the flip side of it, you know, what were things that you look back and say, wow, that was extremely rewarding. I feel really good about this. Or um, and you can each answer it individually, collectively. It's it's all it's all up to I, up to you. How many ideas you have? I <laughs> I, <am, laughs> um, I personally I personally have it. Oh my god. <laughs> Couple of things. Let me know. Bring me some water, please. <laughs> Always okay. happens at the worst times too. So I'm right there with my you. My biggest <laughs> my biggest challenge was um, remaining alive. Apparently, but, uh, I'm here. <laughs> I'm okay. Uh, I have a couple in mind. Uh, personally, since I did the cinematography and the cinematography and everything, and I'm very obsessed with the cinematography in, in a movie with like a good looking, elegant and just beautiful looking movie. Um, that's my obsession. So that was my one of my main focuses was to get that. And, you know, when you make a low budget, you don't always get the exact locations that you have in mind, the exact colors and everything. So one of the challenges was to do lighting and get one look for the entire movie because I'm like I said I love having one clear look for all of it and and like I said when you have a low budget when you do a low budget you, you don't always have the right lighting every on every scene or like the right the exteriors or like there's always things that might make enough to make me to let me get where I wanted to get in post-production still. And then the fact that I did the lighting basically all by myself. And so I was doing the camera and also the lighting. So 
Um, now that I, looking back at the movie, there were a couple of times that I wish I could have, I had a little help, at least like setting the lights so that I could stay more and look more at the at the screen, you know, and just making sure that everything was working like I I, I thought I thought, but like it's it's I guess it's normal that you know you, the, the experience makes it better. So so I look back at that. But what I like what I like about what we made is that despite all of this uh and despite all the all, all the struggles i like the movie i like how it looks and i and if i think of how we got there <laughs> i think it's uh it's yeah. insane that it, and, and the flashback sequence is one, of, is one of my favorites i'm very i'm very happy with that sequence with the acting and by all of them benny and even the other actors it's uh, that was one of the toughest scenes and we're very happy that we got it like that Shot in two days yeah. yeah. Yes. Wow. Really, really. Today is to shoot that. Yes. 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 I think nothing of this movie was easy because yeah. it was our first. It was not really our first movie, but like T three, yeah. like in this kind of machine, was mm -hmm. the first one. Mm -hmm. So we have to prove uh, ourselves, the idea. Mm -hmm. So it was really difficult. The the things that I loved is that it was like a family mm -hmm. our team yeah. our uh, it was great with them uh stefano yeah. he cooks all the time and uh, i was the runner so i was running <laughs> yeah. outside inside he was doing the light yeah. and uh, and the actors the actors things. trust us so much yeah. that it's yeah. it's not uh, an easy thing to to find yeah. i mean yeah. we weren't we are nobody so yeah. they they gave us yeah. so much yeah. and penelope you have been amazing yeah <laughs> yeah really true she really she, she really got us the, the character that we yes. had in mind and mm -hmm. that was uh we were very lucky very lucky. finding you <laughs> and and have you now and so yeah we met a lot of uh, different uh, actress great. and uh we great actress too uh, yeah. with the great uh, english and then Arrived <laughs> Penelope, and we she went, got it. yeah, she got it. When yeah. she she sent us wow. the the video was at the first look we saw. Okay, she's the character. She's the character. So it's yeah. So it Penelope is uh, Penelope is another easy. great thing that we got from this. Yes, yes. definitely one of the best things that we got from this movie. Yeah. And then the fact that we managed to make, I would say, one more thing is that we got we managed to make a a commercial movie mm -hmm. like we wanted to make it because we are. We, we love making very sellable and commercial movies. Mm -hmm. One of the first things that we do when we put together a project is like we put together a poster test and we see how that works, if that, so, you know, yes. how that's how effective that is. And this movie, I like to describe it as a, a quiet place meets uh, lights out. It's like a ghost mm -hmm. version of a quiet place and it's a sound version of lights out. And and we really wanted to get to make to, to keep it commercial and make it commercial. And I think that uh xyz this the distribution got it like completely they, they got the without without time. us saying anything about the movie they just got what we had done the insidious type of movie the conjuring type of movie like they got it and so i was very proud that we so were happy. able to do that yeah. <laughs> with the distribution so happy yeah very happy with them that's outstanding well i'm gonna ask stefano what's the favorite thing that you uh what's what's your go-to dish you're making on set and then i'll ask penelope the same what was the thing you enjoyed the most <laughs> On the set, mm, on the set, I love to 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 create the, um, set the location set design. Yeah. Since I sure. love to do that, yeah, he, he, build, loves, and, he loves building. Uh, yes, and right? he's really yeah. good. These these walls, all of this. Is, oh, yes, now you don't see everything. Nothing is real here. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> Builds everything. Yeah. Like even the, the the I mean, I don't know if I can say this, but the final scene. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying what, okay. what that is. Okay. But the final scene, there's the scare, there's a scare, there's a there's a how do you say library? Yeah, there's a light no in a library. There's a the, the, uh, uh, the la libreria come si dice penny. La libreria nel senso del mobile. The uh, uh, bookshelf. Uh, yeah. Yeah. bookshelf. Okay. Anyway, I, there's a yes. all of that was built, built by him because we yeah. needed that to be built in, in a certain way. To, 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 to just to deal to, with a, with a yeah. scare, but I'm not yeah. gonna say it more than this. I can't say more than this, but yeah. So <laughs> when you can't when you can't buy it, you build it, right? Um, and uh, yeah, and I, exactly. I, I I did set design when I was in high school um, for all of our school plays, and it is something that doesn't get enough um, credit. 
in in the world of filmmaking because and especially when you look at older films from like the 70s or the 80s where they were exclusively using sets to build um it's just a different level of immersion that i think is very hard to recreate yeah. in a digital world um, yes. yeah. and it's magic it's yeah. and then we love ones. and we love practical we of we course it's also be, because of the budget but we love it we love movies that do it practical it's much more effective it's much Scarier. more scary yeah yeah yeah, yeah so because it, it is i think that this is it's interesting because it really is real when you do something practically you are essentially creating the effect that you yes. want people to react to whereas with digital you're able yeah. to kind of vi create a visualization of that effect where the tangibility and the tactile aspect of it is doesn't isn't there so yes. kudos to a lot of actors that can work in that environment but at the same time the tactile and tangible aspects of set production of practical effects make the viewing totally. experience for me more authentic more genuine um even yeah. if it doesn't always look as good you know it's does it it doesn't matter because you're not i don't think the merit of which we judge things is a little different when we know it's real versus um you know digitally created totally agree penny penny she had penelope she had to act with the uh, fake ghost because when we were shooting <laughs> uh you know her reactions she was not actually seeing the ghost like most of the time <laughs> so she had to you know face the camera and pretend that i was the ghost it was fun yes <laughs> what did you visualize oh no, sorry i didn't want to interrupt um <laughs> no you can't go ahead <laughs> that, that was the only time i had to do that uh because like you were saying like everything on set was basically um at at actors beach so the ghosts were basically always there if we were not together in a shoot it was merely for um shoot, a shooting um situation that needed me to be on camera without seeing anything on the other side um but you know every uh, little jump scare that's in the movie every time you see a ghost in the background there was someone there there was the, the actors were there and that was such a treat uh, <laughs> but because uh, it was the last scene that we shot at the end of the two days where we were shooting the flashback they made it even easier for me because I was able to be on set and look at the process look at the um what do you call them bts from from that day no that's a wrong term anyway whatever was <laughs> shot for, uh, dailies, i would yeah, take a look yeah. at the dailies and um so and we and like uh daniel said we we it did feel like such a family so watching the three ghosts shoot that scene was just heartbreaking for us because it, it was such a tender scene and um Kiara the little ghost oh my god when she started crying we were all like okay <laughs> we're out <laughs> um so honestly they they've just made it so easy for, for us to be there um and um I'm piggybacking piggybacking on something you guys mentioned earlier about finding me um the this audition came to me through <laughs> Rocco Marazzita, who plays Seba in the movie. And I really want to give him a huge shout out because he was the sweetest, most professional person um, I could have hoped to work with. He um, he just gave us everything. He's He has this huge heart, a very childlike curiosity he was probably the most excited to shoot any scene every day he was like no way we're doing this amazing and yeah. he got me the job basically <laughs> yes. he was the best partner ever I just wanted to make sure I got that out there <laughs> that's I mean what I will say is he is yeah, easily the nicest doctor. <laughs> he's the nicest boyfriend the nicest on screen ghost. I've seen in a long time <laughs> like until the you know until um, well, we'll just say yeah, we the very start, but the very start, he's, 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 it's just sweet. He's just the sweetest guy. And you're like, wow. Um, the custom pastries, uh, at the beginning yes. of each morning, mm -hmm. like, it's just, it's very, it's very tender. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I'm glad that that's, I'm glad that that was kind of the off screen experience as well. And, and people helping people, honestly, that's what a business like this is built on, um, is, yeah. Hey, I know someone who'd be really great yeah. for this. 
Let's connect. And we had a conversation before uh, starting the shoot of the film where I even suggested, I don't know, when, wouldn't you guys say that maybe we could uh, create some sort of conflict between Seba and Emma so that maybe when the ghosts come up there is a bit more friction there and and stuff but they made a really good point they said we want to keep this relationship as loving as possible to create that more of that contrast mm -hmm. so that by the end when he's not possessed anymore it's you feel the overwhelming love that was at the beginning and that really is sort of what makes them what brings them together um so that was a really unusual when I read the script but totally effective choice on their part that's right it's not a common thing usually there's a, a kind of a demonization of the of the of the spouse um whoever they may be in relation to the protagonist where it's almost like even if they were well-intentioned they're somehow um you know they're they're um what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they're changed or they're kind of influenced. They're, they're negatively influenced. And so they their character because of that changes. So there is this tenderness to it that I think it persists. And it's, um, again, not not expected, but also very welcomed as, as a viewer. Um, now, I want to kind of open it a bit broadly to all of you uh, in regards to influences and inspirations. I mean, this is this there's a lot of um, this is clearly a very su a supernatural film. And I was wondering, you know, what are your some of your favorite supernatural movies that you were thinking about when writing this or creating it or that just stuck with you from a long time? Um, I know from my own experience, supernatural films are the ones that tend to get to me the most um, because I think there's a part of me that believes that ghosts are real, even though my logical brain is like, no, that's not the case. Um, there's always that what if component. So <laughs> I'm always curious to know kind of what movies you all really enjoyed in, in that genre. It's difficult for I, me personally. The others, yeah, that's I the love it so much. Beautiful film. To, to, to yeah. me, um, I think I fell in love for the first time that I fell in love with the genre, with the subgenre of the supernatural horror was The Ring in 2022. Mm -hmm. I think that completely changed my future because if if I'm if I'm trying to make supernatural horror movies now it's it's because of that movie so that's definitely one and then of course there's the Conjuring movies there's of course a movie like Lights Out there's this the Conjuring universe James Wan is one is a director that I I mean that I really love because I love the way he creates the scares because I love create I, I love creating the scares and and I love he scares because they're very they're scary and I get very scared by them, but they're also very creative and beautiful. And like I said, and like I said, I like beautiful movies. So even the fact that the scares are beautiful to look at, it's something and creative. It's something that I love. And come si chiama delle verità nascoste? True lies. Lies beneath. What lies beneath? Oh yeah, with Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer, right? Yeah. Of course, the ring because it was the scariest film ever for me I, I was young and when i saw the first time I, I really yeah was pretty like dying and then uh mike flanagan uh, we yeah. also really like uh, uh, flanagan yeah. yeah all, all his series, projects and series. Um, yeah, and i'm really hoping that it shows from the movie even though it's a low budget that we look at these like very elegant and classic more yeah. classic, more classic that movies like The Ring is, is one of them, or like Flanagan is another one. Uh, of course, budget was low, but still we tried to keep the images and the visuals and the cinematography the most polished and like beautiful possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that's, that's that's definitely an inspiration. Those types of movies, yes. very beautiful and, and, and classic. Mm -hmm. Definitely feels like a very kind of classy uh, ghost film, if you a, a supernatural film. And uh, I will say James Wan is responsible for one of the best scares uh, that for me at least is in Insidious, the pacing doorway scene yeah. and all of a sudden the person's inside and they were, it, that still gets me to this day. Um, Penelope, over to you. What I mean, are you a horror fan? And if so, what supernatural movies really get to you? You, before this movie, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> and then I realized I had to do uh, some homework. Um, but 
I sort of love any horror movie that has any kind of psychological element to it. So I don't know if it's supernatural. It felt supernatural when I watched it, but um, Mother really upset me. Like It was really um, beautiful to watch, but um, it was one of the first times that I started enjoying watching horror movies because for a very long time, I didn't understand the appeal, <laughs> which I guess is what... We're a bunch of sickos. That's what it is. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, that this is kind of a nice chill. I don't know what it is. And then uh, I got, I started watching a few on my own. I have a few on my list that I want to watch. Um, the Hereditary um, is very wow. high up on that list. Uh, and the Pearl saga. Uh, saga. Wow. Um, can't wait. I love Mia Goth. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, like, um, it, it, I, I guess I'm more interested in anything that's that seems as possible as uh, as it can be. So Midsummer, for me, was like, oh my god, I'd never want to go to that part of the world <laughs> because I'm worried, <laughs> really worried. But it it was, yeah, um, weirdly pleasing to watch. There's a there's a theory that people that like horror movies. Um, like the escapist element of being afraid without the danger of actually putting oneself in peril. So it's almost like adventure junkies like to do things that cause mass adrenaline rushes, whereas horror fans tend to be looking for that more Ooh. internal scare, but less, um, but even but just as satisfying. Um, it's a, uh, there's a bunch of interesting psychology about why people watch horror um, but at the end of the day, it's very subjective. And um, and I also, and I think the list of movies you've got going for you is going to be uh, quite an enlightening, especially, particularly Hereditary is is an absolute triumph of just emotion. Um, and uh, and so it's 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 interesting to hear that it's almost made you a bit of a convert in some ways of like it's, op it's expanded your horizons a bit, which is outstanding. It's because they're so enthusiastic about it. <laughs> they're like, oh my God, no, it's so cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of energy is is certainly addicting. I I, uh, I I can't I can't attest to. And one thing I've always said about horror fans is that we will watch ninety minutes of something that's relatively mediocre for the ten or fifteen minutes that are truly amazing in it, um, because at the end of the day, we, we 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 mine gold. We mine for that kind of gold, which is not so much the whole. If you get the whole, it's great, wonderful. But if you can get something out of it that really sticks with you. Um, and I would say, from my perspective, the sound of the camera and some of the camera tricks that were done to kind of show you this inversion of reality, um, won't forget those anytime soon. And very much uh, appreciate that you all have done it on a budget. We talked to a lot of filmmakers um, and, and cast members uh, on this, uh, on our interviews who, you know, we don't talk to a lot of folks who have big budgets. So it's always the similar of how do we make do with less? How do we still get the same effect? So I think a massive congratulations goes out to all four of you for the great work. Um, and I have one last question for you, which is what kind of, do you, it, and anything you're willing and able to talk about, of course, and do you have any projects coming up that are in the works that you want to share or that you're able to share more about that we can look forward to? We have, uh, we are, uh, yeah, we are working on a new movie or an next movie. It's uh, something it's not a sequel, it's something brand new. And it's still, I would say, a supernatural horror. It's still trying to be commercial and with a strong concept. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also gonna be very relatable to most of us. And I would say all of us because of the yes. themes, you know, it, yes. it, it deals with grief and depression and um, loneliness. So we have that psychological, very present element but at the same time, we, we're also going to make it a fun ride yes. of scares like yeah. we love to do. So it's like, I would say if I have to name a similar movies that came out lately, I would say that it's the smile movie. So it's a very, mm -hmm. the, you have the psychological deep and heavy journey of the lead mm -hmm. character. But at the same time, you have the fun of the scares and jump scares. So that's the, that yeah. type of movie. And um, and what's fun, like we're very excited about this because First, we should be able to have a little bigger budget. So that's the first great thing to be happy about. 
Second, we're going to bring in, you know, the experience, all the experience that each of us and all the, the entire team um, got from the first movie. And then since we love creating the scares, we're very happy because finally with this movie, we can, you know, move on from the sound on and off, you know, trick for the scares. And that will allow us to, uh, you know, create to have more, ma yeah. much more creative and inventive and fun scares and we got the script um, uh, ready and we're ready to go. And hopefully we'll be able to shoot uh, later, like around starting from May, hopefully, and having the movie ready around September. Uh, not sure yet, but we're almost there. This is so. the idea, yeah. This is the idea. I'm very excited. Very. <laughs> That's outstanding. <laughs> Penelope, is there anything we can expect for you in the future? Now that you've got your first one out of the way, what's what's next? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Time. you get me on the other side of the pond <laughs> and I'll, <laughs> I'll gladly come um i'm uh i was asked to audition for this upcoming movie and i hope it goes really well because i love working with these guys um and <laughs> um yeah uh i i am doing the hustling at the moment so things are hopefully lo looking up but um i'll keep you posted <laughs> well, well we'll we'll be sure to we'll be sure to um you know keep an eye on 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 what moves you're making and try and help the best we can to promote you know not just what the t3 group is doing but also penelope the work you're going to be getting into so um i just i want to say thank you all uh, for taking the time to have this conversation it's always wonderful your time time. Your words. Uh, thank of you. course i mean it's uh it's it's a pleasure to be able to speak with folks that are be able to do something that many people can't say they have which is create something new um, and create something beautiful so thank you all for the opportunity again to reiterate um the sound of silence is going to be out on vod and digital streaming services next friday march 9th 2023 so be uh, be keep an eye out for it there, and we'll be sure to try and cover as much of the T3 and the work that Penelope San Giorgi does um, moving forward. So hopefully these are faces we'll become familiar with. But uh, heartfelt thank you from us and Makai Daily to you all, and best of luck with the upcoming release. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, guys. Thank you Take so care. much. Mm -hmm.